All right, guys, here we are. <laughs> Growing Up Italian Podcast, episode 44. We're here with my crew. I'm Rocco. What's up, guys? It's Miguel. Sabino. And today, we have another banger for you guys. We got our buddy, Sal the Voice, Valentinetti. I feel like I gotta say Salvatore. Salvatore after hearing McKella, Rocco, Sabino, <laughs> Salvatore. <laughs> you can't Salvatore. just hit him can't beat him, join him. <laughs> Listen, Sal, we appreciate you coming out first and foremost. You know, today was a little bit of a bad day uh, in terms of weather. It's so. just water. <laughs> hey, listen, it beats the hell out of how cold it's been. So I- I'll take rainy and 60 degrees over not raining and five any day of the week. I mean, and anything beats North Dakota, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no shots at North Dakota. but That place. I mean, listen, I love the people. Don't get me wrong. I will come back to North Dakota in the summer. It was 10 degrees when I got on my plane. Uh, unbelievable. That's crazy. We froze. Like, uh, you know, forget it. We froze like last month's meatballs. <laughs> yeah, they're definitely frozen by now. The freezer burn and everything. This is that Florida. Florida. Just like Nana's yeah, house. Yeah. This is when you fly down south. Oh, definitely. Florida, Florida does have its perks. I, again, Florida's great people. And I think There's one of the Italians in Florida, too. I, I was going to say, I think the reason why is because they're all from here. Yeah. This is Florida is like the sixth borough. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I'm the youngest snowbird there is. Yeah. Listen, I, 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 I'm 23 years old. But wow, I'm, you're 23. Right. I'm weathered. You're wow. old soul, I look man. like crap this because it is because it is cold. Right. <laughs> so I found. Listen, I found that I am done. Right. Done I'm done. Sense. I'm done living where the air hurts my face. Listen, I love it during the summer. I'm done going to some tropical, beautiful place to sing for these nice, wealthy people and then having to go back to JFK to dig my car out of three feet of white bullshit. I'm done. (laughs) I'm done. Delray Beach, Florida. You know what the motto is in Delray Beach? No flurries, no worries. There we go. That's it. Where is Delray? Is that by... uh... It's next to Boca. It's Boca adjacent. That's why it's coming up now. Miami. Fort Lauderdale's a little busy for me. I, I'm, I'm, like a, I'm like an old man. You're a Long Island guy. I like right? West I get Palm. up at 7 in the morning. I got to have my coffee. Espresso, right? Uh, before I talk to anybody. No, espresso don't even do it for me no, no more. No, I, I drink espresso and go to bed. Wow. <laughs> wow. That's because you're 23. I go you to, get to my age. I want to see if you're I go to McDonald's, that. and the only reason I go to McDonald's is because they have the biggest cup that you could possibly get iced coffee in. And no matter how cold it is, and I know I just said I hate the cold. Uh, so I'm total hypocrite. No matter how cold it is, I have to get a large black iced coffee every morning from McDonald's. No sugar. Or I no can't milk. talk to anybody. No milk, no sugar. I'm on a diet. I know you can't <laughs> tell, but this is a work in progress. Look, well, look you, at me. I'm the BQE. I'm under construction. <laughs> like well, you're that. drinking a Diet Manhattan Special right now. That's right. The We're diet stuff. We're trying to get stuff. you that uh, sponsorship deal, man. This stuff. Awesome. I don't even care about a spot. I just want them to send me a case. You know how much I spend on this Manhattan Special <laughs> that I go and tell everybody I love Manhattan Special? You know, there's a store in Florida, this place, Joseph's. It's the only, they like... Manhattan Special it's there, the right? only place that has it. I, I walked in there. I fell on my knees and started to cry <laughs> because I saw the big bottles of Manhattan Special. I filled a shopping cart with those. They were done in a week. I came back. I was pale. I was sweating from all the whatever's in this... Manhattan diet, I don't know. soda. It's like fake sugar. Probably. I came back. I got two more cases. <laughs> I started an IV. You like regular Manhattan special? Or? I do, but again, under construction. <laughs> I hear you, man. Oh, yeah. It's a struggle. And, it, you know, before we started this podcast, we were saying that winter time is the hardest time to eat. Good oh, man. Because it's so cold and you need that extra coating of... You know? We could say that. I've, I've used that excuse in the past. I use that excuse every day. I think it's just like I'm, I'm sad. You know, it's it's dark at four o'clock. It's too cold to go outside and drive my convertible. I'm I'm sad. So I got it. Don't be yeah, that's sad. That's why you're going to Florida, man. Frankie time. My friend Frankie yeah. says, don't be sad. You got so sad. Don't be sad. You got so sad. He made up a song. I think I know what you're talking about. <laughs> so now with the, with the mustache. Yeah, so yeah, now, yeah, like, yeah. I'll be sitting at my desk. Right. Looking through inquiries, whatever. I'll be sitting at my at my dining room table. My mother, my mother helps me out with my taxes, all my stuff. I'll be sitting with her, what and I'll be. My mother doesn't help. I'll be <laughs> sitting there like an old man with my reading glasses on, flipping through, right? And you know your usual snack. And this was even growing up, mm-hmm. like your usual kids' usual after school snack 
is what? Chips. Man, right, maybe, no, 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 no. I, I'm, talking, I'm talking to the, the, the ritzy Long Island neighborhood with the oh, high taxes. Know, those kids know. are eating celery. Oh, you okay, know? Okay, okay. They're eating like know. little, uh, what are Dunkaroos, right? Maybe a little carrots and yeah, ranch. Carrots and hummus, maybe. <laughs> I had, and I was like eight years old. I had a knife and, and a, a sausage. I had a knife and the dry, the dry sausage like that just yeah. sitting there. And My mother goes, you go, yeah. and, and on, a, on a block, a piece of cheese. Just go ahead. That you was it. Like, that sounds like our. I used to sit now. Now I sit at my desk with the super side of the knife. You know what? Uh, like a bag of chips. I'm just <laughs> popping super side. With our with our grandma, <laughs> our nonna, she like makes her own sausage, so she hangs it up. Oh no! And then she hangs it up in the kitchen, and like while it's hanging, we'll just like <laughs> you want to. You know, how do you not? You want to know what so temptation is? That's like the devil's temptation. That how thing, do you not? It isn't even cured yet. We're having it like a little little it's raw so because it's that's so, when it's that's when it's the best. It tastes the best to me, and, and, and if you from fry my point it like of view, because it's like half cold cuts. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's exactly. half little mushak. Yeah, you know, like a little soft in the middle. Ooh. A little mushak. You fry that. It's the best. You've had fried mortadella. Honestly, I had that in Brazil, like a fried mortadella <laughs> sandwich with American cheese. Oh my but god! It's, it's like fried bologna. Fried bologna is good too, but. Yeah, but it's, it's like it's idea. like high class fried bologna. Yeah. <laughs> it's <laughs> a little like four dollars more a pound. <laughs> yeah, the, the it, it's we we were talking also about about you know what kind of neighborhood Williamsburg used to be. Mm -hmm. You know, it was it was. You were saying that your uh, it was working class Italian people. Mm -hmm. So. But your grandma came to Greenpoint. This first, was this saying. was her first place, but they didn't have any money. Fried uh, our version of the fried bologna sandwich just happened to be better because Italians are better at food. Period. You know, but it's, it's the same. It's the are. same idea. You know, we like polenta. We love polenta. Polenta is a, a a peasant dish. Yeah, right. but it's a northern Italian dish. It's too. a northern Italian dish, but it's it was something that was good, that was wholesome, that that you know, Feeling. poor immigrant families could afford to make for their kids. You know, Americans call polenta grits. Yeah, and now so, yeah, forget yeah. grits. Grits is polenta <laughs> mushad. <laughs> <laughs> but it. it, it it was it was our way of uh, uh, of of coping with you know coming to a new country and having to start from scratch. Yeah. I think that's the that's the experience that people lose here when they come to Williamsburg now, is they they don't they don't see that. My grandmother, her first day in this country, she's in Williamsburg, Brooklyn, right? I'm uh, sorry, Greenpoint, Brooklyn, mm -hmm. and well, she same thing, you know, like right, same same neighborhood. Yeah. It's again Williamsburg adjacent. So, uh, she came here. And she didn't have any money. She was, you know, she came with whatever she had in a suitcase. And when she came off the boat, off this long voyage, she had to wash all her clothes. She washes her clothes. She hangs them out on so the she line. She came off the boat. Off the boat. This is her first day. Day wow. one, America. Right? My grandfather, who, who had already had kids here, went back to Naples to find, uh, uh, you know, a new wife. Brought my grandmother back. She was 33. I'm oh, sorry. Th she was 30 years old when she got married. You know, which was back then. Was that was old. considered. That was old, but she People was the. Get married at sixteen. Back she then, was yeah. the first born uh, child, and back then, if your first born was a girl, the girl had to stay there. She had to help raise all the, you know, all the other kids. She was the second mother. She was the second mother. Mm -hmm. So finally, my grandmother gets the chance to to come to America. She gets the chance to get up and go out on her own. She finds a husband, and he's a great guy. She washes her clothes. She puts him out on the line outside their apartment in Greenpoint. She pulls him back in a few hours later, and they're black with soot. Because this was all From factories. Dirt, yeah. Nobody wow. believes us. Nobody believes you if you say Williamsburg was all factories. Because now it's all... My mother, my mother makes it's a joke. Facts. She goes, I can't even afford to, to grow up in the... In, to, sorry, I can't even afford to buy a house in, in the shithole I grew up in. Because it was all factories. It was all, you know, it was, it was rough life back then. Nobody understands but that. My dad always says, like, he's like, I wish I knew back then. Because there were so many factories in the north side. Oh, yeah. He's like, if you just pay the taxes, you would be able to take over the building. Forget it. He's like, I wish I would have known. But, you know, like you said, how are you supposed to know? It was just like a, a shithole. Well, that's why, that's why they, they moved away. It was out of necessity. They, they felt like they wanted a better life. And Where? who knew that one day. Where did she move to? Uh, Richmond Hill, Queens. Okay. So that that's yeah. how we ended up on Long Island. From Richmond Hill. If you go from if you go from if you come from South Brooklyn, Bensonhurst, Bay Ridge, you chances Staten are Island. you're gonna go Staten Island to Jersey. Right. Yeah. If you grow up in North Brooklyn, Williamsburg, Greenpoint, you went to Queens, Queens and then Long and then Long Island. Yeah. 
Or even Manhattan, like a lot of times where Manhattan too. A lot of yeah, a lot of Manhattan. Like Lower East Side, yeah, Lower yep. East Side. Chinatown, Harlem. Yeah. A lot of those Italians, like where Rayos is, Rayos is used to be an Italian neighborhood, yeah. Harlem, 114th Street. Uh, you'd go yeah. Have up you to the Bronx. Rayos? I, I've been dying to go. We get right. I was invited by Archangelo. Actually. If you get invited, you have to. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no, but he invited me one night when I was literally I was on listen, vacation. I'll tell Nico about Rayos. It's like that place that um. We'll 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 talk about Rayos. I got I invited go once my, and I didn't so my, go. My grandmother. Maybe I'll get a seat if I go with Sal. <laughs> my grandmother pulls her clothes in front of the line and it black with soot because it's Greenpoint and it's mm -hmm. the nineteen early nineteen sixties, mm -hmm. and Greenpoint, Williamsburg. It was all Polish, uh, and Italian. Mm -hmm. all, all immigrants. All, all everyone trying to make it. She pulls her clothes in there, black with soot. She starts crying. My grandfather gives her some money. So go to Fifth Avenue. The best shopping in all in the whole entire world. That's crazy. Right? She goes down there. She spends a whole day. She comes back with nothing. My grandfather goes, Philomena, Kifai, what, what happened? You went. She goes, I hate that this country. <laughs> she goes, why? Everywhere I go Fifth Avenue... Sala, sala, sala. I want a sala, sala for the table. <laughs> <laughs> My grandfather goes, fill a minute. If that's a sale in, in, in English. Special deal. It means a special deal or, or a, a discount. Right. And, and she goes, F. So she goes the next day and she sees the sale and she sees all these beautiful clothes. And now in Italy, it was, you know, Post-war Italy, post-World War II Italy, it was hard to get anything, let alone nice designer clothes. Yeah. Yeah. She walked into, I think, like Wait, an Alexander's... Where was your family from in Naples. Italy? Naples. Naples. Saviano. Right. It, you definitely is, ain't seen anything. Saviano is a, a, a town right outside of Nola. Wow. You know, oh, it, was, wow. it, was, it, was, it was rough. What's the, what's the population size? Do you know? Oh, Roughly? Like very small? I put it this way. I went when I was 11 years old. We were, my, my uncle lived in a compound. Right, my, my uncle, my cousin Gennaro, lived on a compound with these big gates and everything. And we Is that the last was, time you were there when you were 11? That's the last time I was there. And I'm, I'm trying to get my mother back there. But he lived in a gated compound. And we all thought, oh, my God, he's rich. That's why he lives in his gated compound. He wasn't rich. He had to it's put like, walls around his, because it was, it was, it's a rough neighborhood. Yeah. Uh, so got, I'm actually going to show something. Did you ever see Gamora, the TV show? Oh, yeah. Did, you watched it every day? That's uh, Naples. That's my Naples. mother watches it. That's Naples. And that's, you know what she watches too? Phenomenal. There's another show where the girls are from Naples. Um, oh, I forgot. She's been watching it for the last couple of months. She's going to kill me hey, look, if I don't find is, out. Uh, uh, this is how the houses are in, uh, in Napoli. Yeah, that's... The show Gamora. So you're talking about that's, like uh, that's, basically the projects of That's Naples. where the other side of my mother's family lives. <laughs> so we had to drive through the town to get to there. And as we were driving through the town, my uncle had, the, had a Mercedes. He was a bus driver, right? Mm -hmm. We asked why he didn't go to work for three days. He was on strike, of course. But he was, he's a union bus driver. He gets paid good money, and he drives this Mercedes. We go to try to get to that side of town, right, where Gamora is filmed. Mm -hmm. And as we're driving through the town, people just stop and stare at us. Like these you kids. You tell you're American, like, that you're different. I compared it to an experience that I had in Arkansas because it was exactly the same. Like my cousin got married in Arkansas. That's a whole other story. <laughs> <laughs> Where the kids came out from this alleyway with bikes and just followed us down the street until we got to the next block and then they, we turned off and they turned off. But I remember that as soon as those kids, my mother was sitting in the back seat with me and my sister. My dad was in the front. My dad's 6'3". He's, he's Eastern Italian, so he's got the Eastern blood in him. He's, a gigantor. My father looks like Mr. Clean, and I look like the Little Caesars pizza guy. <laughs> because my uh, pizza, pizza. Because my mother, you know, Man, is not really done. Right, and that too. That don't help. <laughs> but anyway, my mother grabbed, reached across the car, across my sister to me, and pulled us in as these kids were following us. And, I, you, you, you know, as a kid, you don't process things as quickly as, you know, as an adult does. Mm -hmm. But... Looking back at that, I go, wow, my mother was scared as hell. My mother doesn't get scared. My mother's from, from Richmond Hill mm -hmm. by way of Greenpoint. She don't get scared of nothing, and she was scared. I remember one time I went to Naples because uh, my girlfriend was staying with me in my hometown, and she wanted to go to her hometown. So to get there, she had to take a plane, and I went with, like, two of my friends, and we're waiting, like, I basically bring her. Like, make sure she gets checked in. Mm -hmm. 
and we're going back to the car, and some like three Napolitan kids go, "Oh, Martina Chiendeo, like, do you have a hundred euros for me?" Yeah. And then my friend who was from there is like, "Nui manga tini maluki pakiang," like we don't even have eyes to cry. But they're like, if you want, we have this extra sandwich. But I'll never yeah. forget. Like we try every it's, time you land in Naples, you get shaken down. You try to get, yeah, they try to rob you. Yeah, but see, you might take that as arrogance. Those kids are just being a, that. That's such Italian confidence right there. Yeah. <laughs> now, now, let, let me tell you, when you hear things about that about Naples, do you get offended in a sense? Like, oh, they have that reputation because I know a lot of Napoli Dons. They're like, oh, that's all you guys think of us. We're crooks. We're guineas. Uh, uh I don't like that. Or gypsies, I meant to say. Uh, gypsies, yeah. yeah. I, I don't like that. Not that there's anything wrong with gypsies. I have, I have friends from Europe who are gypsy. There are good gypsies and there are bad gypsies. That's why they get a bad rap. Mm -hmm. There are good Napoli Dons and there are bad Napoli Dons. Right. And that's why we get but a bad everything rap. Everything else, too. Every culture is like that. It's not every culture is like that, but it's up to you to prove the stereotype wrong. You know, it's up to you to be a good representation of your culture. You know, I, I try to be wherever I go. You know, I try to, I try to, you know, when I go on TV, it's not all how you doing and there, you know, I, I, I mean, try it to. it looks like it's all how you doing. And right. It looks <laughs> like it because that's what sells. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so that's what gets the views, the hits. But at the end of the day, what you see is that I'm a family man. I brought my mother on America's Got Talent. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I talk of my, my grandmother passed away uh, October of, of uh, 2017. Was that before you were on? America's Got Talent? That was, that was after. That was my, my nonna, my mother's mother. That's the, the oh, story The story I was okay, telling. She's nonna. from Naples. My, my dad's mother was born here. She's yeah. actually from Lower Manhattan, another, okay. another famous Italian neighborhood. Yeah. But um, my, my, my reverence to my family, you know, we, we, I always let that show when Families I was Families every day. That's what Napoli Dan is yeah. about. That's what Italian is about. Yep. You know? That's 100% an Italian. I, I love back. The Sopranos more than anybody else i love watching the sopranos but we know that's not italian and and people the ignorant people yeah those are the 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 people that make fun of napoli don to say that we're ghetto or whatever mm -hmm. it's, the, it's the same idea people who look at the sopranos and they go oh wow look oh, oh they're all mobsters or oh, they're all they're all mobbed up or whatever we can look at the sopranos and say you know they have sunday dinner no matter how much, no matter what this guy does mm -hmm. in his street life, that's Italian right there as he comes home for Sunday dinner. You know, he, he, he provides for his no family. No matter how his, many gumas, no matter <laughs> all that stuff. To <laughs> each his own. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, we're, we're able to at least pick out the, the good in that. Yeah. You know, well, I don't think a lot of people are. What's funny is um, I was looking at that uh, fir your first appearance on America's Got Talent like the other day. Yeah. Just to refresh every day. And I remember, like, it, that was what, 2016? 2016. Okay. So I, I remember. It's going to be three this, years this year. I'm, I remember, and I'm still working. I, God, God bless. God bless. God bless. Yeah, God God bless. bless. I remember this <laughs> Another like, Italian thing. literally happening because, you know, in the Italian community, when, like, someone's doing something great, mm -hmm. all the Italians talk about it. Like, it's a big deal. Oh, my God. You have no idea how overwhelmed I, I still am. By the support of Italians worldwide, when it's the same idea. When when you come from an Italian neighborhood and somebody comes up from the neighborhood, everybody supports them. You know, you look at um, that kid Luca yeah. from from Williamsburg. Mm -hmm. Luca two times. Shout out to Luca two times. Luca two times. Sal, Sal's on it too. This man. kid's got seventeen thousand followers based on the community standing behind him, sharing his videos, getting him out there. And now other people... And special thanks to New York Nico, my buddy right there. Yeah, absolutely. Pretty much handed him a huge platform which and expects nothing in return. That's, that's what we're so talking about. That's you know, when I, when I did America's Got Talent, I was overwhelmed by the support of the Italian-American community all over the world. Hardcore Italians, Mike, Mike Chirosa oh, Mike's in, uh, the man. in, in he loves Chicago. You too, Mike. Uh, Dominic Buda. With Italian I comedy it, yeah. uh, in, in Toronto, uh, Giuseppe the MC, uh, even Compare Pipo. You know, it, it, like all, all these guys up there, uh, a, a tremendous support from Italians all over the world. Even I still get DMs from Italians over in Italy who, who are like, The Zips. Sei un grande, la maggior. Sei un top. Sei un top. It's, you know, it, it's, it's overwhelming, and it's, it's awesome true. because 
when you went on, I remember a couple years before was Pia, right? She was on another show. Pia Toscano yeah. was on American Idol. On American Idol, and you know, same thing. Like she's doing fantastic, living out in LA. She's right. from Howard Beach. You know Beach. what it is? It's like something for us to brag about, almost. <laughs> that I could say, see, he's Italian. That's the but, first thing. But that's how, what I do. How great it is! How great is it that we we have a culture where we were raised like that? Yeah. Where you would say, "Oh, look, my cousin uh, is is doing this thing on." Uh, forget it. I remember when my aunt, who who we hadn't spoken to in like three years, calls my house out of the blue <laughs> to tell us that her son was going to be on the news. Yeah. Just, just a, and we all watch, we all tune in. Mm-hmm. He's on for maybe, he's in like the background <laughs> of like a news interview shot, shoveling a, snow. I, I think it was, it was, it was so a big snowstorm and they're doing, he's in the background shoveling snow. <laughs> we all watch, we all take a picture of it. Within an hour, it's on everybody's Facebook. It's everybody's. My, my, my grandmother is calling me, asking me to, take a, to find the picture that, everybody, that my aunt is sending everybody and bring it to her in Wantor, in, 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 in <laughs> 10 minutes away, 10 minute drive. I had to take a picture of the screen, and print, it out. <laughs> print it out, and run it over to her. And she had it on her, on her, on her like. Um, she framed it? She framed it. <laughs> it was just a flash. The joy of their mom. It w- again, t- reason to be overwhelmed when something like this happens. Because my family, that's another thing. My family's been so supportive. You know, it- it's so funny. When, when you do hit big, there's people with their hands out. Always. There's always people, people who, come, expect things too. who come from your past or whatever. I have cousins who... who don't even tell me they're coming to my show. They just show up. They, show up. That's support, man. they buy 20 tickets. And you know, I, I, I'll meet love. people. Well, for that's th- good that you're saying that. I thought you were going to say they just show up to your show and like yeah, come back and like, break No, rules. you know what it is? Uh, and, and there are family. There's a lot of family who come to so much stuff mm-hmm. that I, I like oh, once in a while. Like I'll just say, no, no, no. This one's on me or, or something like that. Mm-hmm. But, my, but overall, my family's been so supportive. So tremendously supportive, which is important. And furthermore, like we said, it's, it, when, you're, when you're coming up in an Italian community, people want to support you. Mm-hmm. I cannot stress the significance that having my family behind me, uh, the, sorry, the significant role that that's well, played for you. in my professional life. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I was so nervous. I'm, I'm getting a place in L.A. Oh, I yeah? Was, you're moving out there? I'm getting a place in a little LA. Little trap house kind of thing. Yeah, a little <laughs> trap house. Uh, <laughs> so that's what basically that what it is. It's no, it's it's a place to go and make money. You got to be out in LA if you yeah. want to make money in this business. Yeah. You got to go out there once in a while. Other than social media, you know, in in my business and entertainment, yeah, film, for you. film, television, music, a lot of it's in LA. You got to be out there. You got that big personality. That I was so scared. There. To tell my family, to tell my girlfriend, I'm gonna get a place so I can go there a couple weeks at a time. Everybody. Everybody, you go do what you got to do, right? But they weren't happy about it, right? Or they were? Were they like, why are you leaving us kind of thing? I, I, that's the thing. I didn't tell them I was, I didn't say I was moving. That's why you said you're moving to L.A. Right, right, and I right. said, no, no, no. Shut that down real quick. I pretty. can't move anywhere. Like, I thought I was going to move to Florida because the weather's just great or whatever. Time, and, yeah. and there's all Italians. There's a deli. But really, as Italians, what do we need? We need a, a Roman Catholic church. We need a good deli. Bread. <laughs> We need good bread. Manhattan they, special. They truck it down. We need Manhattan special. <laughs> Maybe some limoncello. Right? <laughs> but more than anything, we need our family. Absolutely. Which yeah. always puts fear in your heart when you want to get away from them. So there's no way, there's no way that I can go anywhere if my family's not there full time. Mm-hmm. I could go out for a couple of weeks, you know. Like, uh, like, what do the Amish call it? I can go for like a little rum springer once in a while, <laughs> but uh, you know, I can't, oof, I can't move nowhere like that away from my family. Unless That's, they come with you too, you know. You unless they come with you yeah. too, uh, it. it's, it's more than my mom. You know, that's another thing with being how Italian. Big, how big? Does you, how many? Brothers my family's. I got one sister, uh-huh. but I got Younger? little sister. <laughs> how many that's that's so I don't go to jail. By the way, <laughs> why'd you knock? Uh, uh, that's why I knocked. Um, 
she well four years apart, but I have but I have like ten cousins. Yeah. Twenty cousins that are like my other siblings. There you go, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know? Like and I have my them. aunts who are my other mothers. Mm-hmm. Like when my I love my mother. And every Italian will tell you this. You and your mother butt heads constantly. Because your mother wants nothing more than for the best for you. And especially at this age, we think we know what's best for us. I, I'm 23 years old. I know I know what's best for me. Chances are what she's saying is true. But sometimes you got to get away from that. My Aunt Maria lives five minutes away. So when I'm arguing with my mother, you go to Aunt Maria's I go to my Aunt Maria's house. Yeah. Sounds and then my Aunt Maria tells me the same exact thing that my mother's telling me, but in a different tone. In a nicer way. In a nicer way. Because uh, it's Be now gone mother, through. You know? Right. Because this is, this is the process. Me and my mother start to talk about something. We disagree. Right? She, she gets loud. <laughs> I leave. She calls my aunt. In the five minutes it yeah. takes me. Because as soon as she already knows where I'm going. And this is why I, I, I'll, I'll probably never change this routine no matter what. But she already knows where I'm going. Mm-hmm. She calls the aunts. She either calls my, my Aunt Maria, my Aunt Teresa, my Aunt Marianne. She knows. Mm-hmm. She calls them, tells them exactly what's going on, tells them exactly what we're arguing about, tells them her side of the story. I get there, and then they give me the exact same advice. Just it, now it's gone through two filters. A phone call. And they've had a chance to sit and put coffee on. Mm-hmm. And now they, they, they talk to you and whatever. Yeah. Could you imagine the chaos your life would be if you didn't have those filters? Like, uh, forget it. I, I would have I bought a, a, a boat and I'd be living on it right now because I wouldn't have any money left in my account. Forget it. My first year out when you start making money, yeah, you, you want to blow, blow through it. And your mother's always going to argue with you. Say, no, no, no. The g- good mother would. A good mother a bad mother probably like, buy me a house first. <laughs> right. Well, but, you know, we live in a, in a, right now with a generation, like I said, we think we know what's best for us. You know? You go, ma, you can't, you can't take it with you when you die. You got to have a good time. Mm-hmm. If I didn't listen to my mother, I'd be broke right now. I'd be absolutely broke right now. Sorry, no. I shouldn't say if I didn't listen to my mother. If I didn't listen to my mother, my Aunt Maria, my Aunt Teresa, or my Aunt Marianne. Save your money, you know? Oh, yeah. Invest your money. Could you imagine if, if we didn't have that, that, like, uh, that matriarchal hierarchy? Yeah. We'd fall apart you know, as a lot Italians. Of, a lot of people could learn from you because, you know, you see these uh, artists that are up and coming, and they come out, they make all this money. First thing they do, buy a $100,000 chain, a $50,000 watch. I know, could afford crazy it, but car, and then all of a sudden, when think you about this. That, you know, I could afford it, but if I bought that, I wouldn't have been able to release two albums on my own. Mm-hmm. Oh, independent! You're independent. I'm independent. Good for you. I sat. I was sitting That's with. Uh, I was sitting with a with a good friend of mine. He's a big time producer. Has a big company. That actually, he started in Brooklyn too. Uh, Michael Tadros, Mike, uh, Michael Tadros' Shout father, to, uh, Michael, Tadros. Michael Tadros Jr. I'm sitting with him having dinner, and he asked me who my representation was, who's my manager. I said, you're looking at him. And he says, really? I said, yeah. I am cheap, and that's a good thing. I'm it's, stingy. You're not, you're not cheap. You spend your money wisely. Because the I, fact that you have your own out of this. We, we get into talking at the dinner table, and we're talking about mm-hmm. Los Angeles. And I agree with him here. If you, wanna, if you want people to start talking about you in the industry, once you get out to Los Angeles, you have dinner at some restaurant, this place, uh, I don't know, like Nobu or whatever. Mm-hmm. If somebody sees you out and sees someone taking a picture with you or whatever. Like they, they start figuring out who that is. Like right. Googling. If you do more, every time I go to L.A. and do a video with, with maybe another act for America's Got Talent like Sophie Fatu, who's this little five-year, uh, this little oh, six-year-old. That was amazing. Oh, I saw that. Yeah, that was she's amazing. cute. Right, oh, she's, we actually she's had such that, a sweetheart. That we wanted to talk about she's that. she's the next Shirley Temple. I'm positive of it, and I will not rest until she becomes that. I love that duet you did with her. Right? Yeah, so a- that ain't that a kick in the head? That awesome. Yeah, that was awesome. And I love when you did that um, that Salvation Army. Right. Well, that that that's that was that's, awesome too. That I'll get into because that's a whole get part. Back to somebody like when you get to that platform, and you know now you can start. You got to use it. It's awesome because a lot of people forget to do that, you know? Again, that's, 
I feel like that's that's not only something that everyone should be doing, but that's something that was instilled in me in the way that I grew up and the way my parents my parents were, you know. Uh, we were talking at the table, me and this guy Tadros. He's a big time producer, and he says, "Once you get out there, you got to get yourself. You got to be seen in something nice." I got a guy who leases I don't know these nice fancy oh, cars okay. for a year, right? Uh, 1500 a month. I go, hmm, that's going to be my rent, 1500 a month, because I'm going to get a little true box to crash my head in, you know, to, to sleep, because I'm only there just me. What do I got to impress nobody with? And I'll tell you the truth. I, <laughs> I made him laugh, too. I said, I'll tell you the truth. I was in Florida going down A1A, and I love old school caddies because mm -hmm. they're, they're nice. They're comfortable. They don't make them like that anymore. They don't anymore. make them like that no more. They're 19, good cars. Good American cars. Little, you know? Right. I'm driving down A1A in Deerfield Beach. I see an old man shaking, putting a for sale sign in the window of a 1985 Cadillac Eldorado. Shout out to Vinny Cadillac, the president of this society. He loves Cadillacs. He worked for them for 30 years. You would love him. I paid yeah. about three months payment on that fancy car that he wanted to lease he, he said for me to go lease. I paid about three months of that. I got a car that'll run forever mm -hmm. and that everybody and looks at. And you love at. it. And, you and love I'm it. happy and I love it. And that's what matters to me. And I think that's what, that's where, you know, mine and, and Big Time Tommy, shout out Big Time Tommy, Tommy Romola one on I Instagram. I thought he was going to be here with you today. I was, I was like, you know what? I know what? I should have I should have asked him, but I was so busy that I forgot. It's okay. I'll bring him Next back time. here. Next time. I will bring him back. I promise Tommy. Tommy I'll bring you back here. <laughs> That's his we love Tommy, man. Tommy, the reason why Tommy's so popular is because he's so happy. And and if there's anything that we need in this world more, uh, or anything people need more of, is they need to see somebody who's happy. Mm -hmm. No matter what they're doing, but they're being themselves. You know, you look at look at the the you know, Caitlyn Jenner is so popular. You're talking about the man, right? The man that's a woman now? Right. Yeah, okay. Because I, but, I him up. But she did what she had to do to be happy. Yeah. And there are so many. The reason why she's so popular and the reason why there's so many people that idolize her is because there are so many people out there seeking that same happiness. Mm -hmm. right. And if they just let go of all, of all, of all the, the, the societal judges, Right. I don't care if it says Ferrari or if it says Fiat. Because honestly, to me, the Fiat's more fun. The Fiat's a convertible. And if I get the Fiat, I could afford an Eldorado. <laughs> <laughs> you could have two cars. Right. Price of one. So you got you to gotta be smart with your money. You got to do what makes you happy. That's, a hard, that's, that's first and foremost is you got to do whatever it is that makes you happy. And I, I guarantee that people will gravitate you know, towards that. You know what's that. crazy is that nobody really, like, teaches you to save your money, be smart with your money. You know, all these classes you give Whole these kids. Whole thing. Manhattan special. I need we another, another one. one for you. No, no, no. It's all right. I want them to bring it over from across <laughs> the street. <laughs> because they don't give anything away for free. I'll tell you, I'll tell you myself. The Italians. Owners, the, owners, the owners still deliver. The Italians. Don't give nothing away yeah. for free. Am I lying? The yeah. owners of Manhattan Special deliver the cases themselves. I hope the IRS OBS. isn't watching this because I don't do no favors for nobody unless that favor comes with an envelope. <laughs> <laughs> you need the boost. But, uh, so you got you to gotta do what makes you happy. I think that's, that's what makes people gravitate towards you more. Uh, no matter who you are, if they see you being yourself and living your life, you know, I, I, I love old caddies. I drove an old caddy here today and I, I, it was the, the, the most annoying thing to parallel park in the world. With no but, camera, nothing. But no camera, no camera. I got the, it's a little new. It's got the little parking sensor with the little oh, light yeah? that blinks. <laughs> yeah. People don't know how to drive these days. Nah. You know, it, it, it's. We live in a world that cars you know, drive for you. You know how happy I was floating that thing down the LIE to get here? It don't matter if it's got a Bentley thing or a Coupe de Ville thing. It don't matter to me. It matters that you're happy. But that, that's, that's besides the point. The, the point is, no matter what you do, if you're happy doing it, you'll be successful with it. Mm -hmm. You know, look at that kid, Luca. Your boy Luca from Williamsburg. Mm -hmm. He is so happy doing what he's doing. Mm -hmm. And just because of that, 
He's got tremendous success. Yeah. That, that guy, Frankie Time, I mentioned before, he's having such a great time. That's why he's so popular. Tommy is having the time of his life. Mm -hmm. He gets to sit back, relax, and... and I, love, I love his uh, selfie videos about the old school. The old school. <laughs> he's telling you how it used to be. Yeah. It's, it, it, old it's, school. It's a simpler time. It's just a simpler time and place. We live in a world that's so uh, uh, consumed with, uh, with societal pressure and this, this social media and everything. Everybody puts an image in their head of what they're, of what they're supposed to be and everyone's opinion. You know how it used to be? We didn't have Facebook. You'd go, and, and f this isn't for our generation. I, I don't think I remember a world without Facebook. This is my, my parents used to go to the cafe on a Sunday and used to argue about your politics, right? And then you used to go home. Now... Now you get somebody's opinion jammed down your throat at three in the morning when you're trying to take a dump. <laughs> I hate, like I hate nobody, the there's nothing worse than that. And that pisses you off. And that's when you get combative. And that's why, that's why happiness is so important to, to give out to the world because there's all this combative energy on social media. There's nothing, there's nothing. That's why Tommy preaches about the old school. I know. Because it's, it's, it's better. That's why Tom, I Tom sing the music great, that man. I sing. And the music was better. My, was the, music, the music that I sing is timeless, and the reason why is because it's feel-good music. Absolutely. You have the voice for it, too, though. I mean, that's why I call you Sal the Voice. When Not I start, a lot of people could sing uh, Frank Sinatra, you know. I just love it. Dean Martin, all, like, classic stuff. I just love it. I don't, I don't sing it. A lot of people's misconceptions that I'm an impersonator because I sound a certain way. I sound a certain way. Because I started smoking Newports when I was 12 years old <laughs> behind a Catholic school, which I won't mention the name of because I don't want to get them in trouble. It's not their fault. <laughs> I, I, I sound this way because I, I just, this is, this is, I got a deep voice. I can't do pop music unless I, you know, do a, do a split on a balance beam. <laughs> you know, I, 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 this, this is how I am. But I love this music. Not only because it's feel-good music. But because when I was growing up, you know, we had Backstreet Boys and we had uh, In Sync and Britney Spears, JT. Justin Timberlake, uh, Nick Lachey. Like, uh, where was where was like you know, Nick Luciano? Like, where was that guy? None of them were Italian. I had nobody to look up to. You know, yeah, when I when I look back to to music that made me feel good that I could look down on my little iPod and see Sinatra mm -hmm. and, and, and hear Dean Martin singing Penso che ho sogno così non ritorne mai più the, 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 the language that was being spoken in my grandmother's house. That, that to me made me feel good. It brought back memories for me. My, my American grandma, my, my grandma Tina, I called my American grandma just because she was born here. Her name was Santina Scambati Valentinetti. It doesn't get more Italian than that. <laughs> but she was, she was first generation America. She grew up with Sinatra playing in her house. She was from, from lower Manhattan, then moved to South Brooklyn, and then out to the island, which was rare. Usually South Brooklyn, yeah, goes to Jersey. Staten Island, New Jersey, like we said. But she would play this music in her kitchen, and we'd dance until my father came to pick me up. This music brings back a time for me where I was truly happy. I was with my, my grandma who loved me more than I could do no wrong in my grandma's house. I could break a door down and she would just pick it up and screw it back in and then Some scotch tape and give me a Kit Kat bar and say, go ahead. <laughs> you know, like when, once right there, man. when I was growing up, I'd be bullied all the time. And, you know, school was wasn't always the, the happiest place for me. Why would uh, you get bullied? Because I was overweight, uh, and my shirt said Gap on it. Gay and proud. Oh, yeah. That yeah. was the thing, right? This is, yeah. That's what that's what we used to say as kids, like gay and proud. Yeah, because you'd make fun of the kid who was wearing the gay Gap shirt, because he didn't have a moose on his on his ridiculously tight polo shirt. <laughs> you know, I tried Abercrombie. My mother, my mother was so against me getting because she knew she knew the, all these kids were full of shit. She knew how dumb it was to be worried about what kind of shirt you wore because she grew up in, in this type of neighborhood, mm -hmm. you know, where it, that didn't matter. It mattered who you were. She grew up in a, in a different time. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I, would get, I would get bullied and she'd say, get over it. She'd go, don't worry about it. My, my Uncle Joe, 
who got me into singing professionally, but I, I'll, get, I'll get to that in a second, my, my grandmother. My grandmother was my best friend because of that. I could do no wrong, and we'd listen to this music. When she passed that away... That was like your escape. That was my escape. When she passed away, the music is what I had to remember her by. Because I've, you started singing later on, though. It's not like... I was 11 years old when my grandmother died of leukemia, and leukemia is a rough one, especially to watch you know, somebody who you love so much deteriorate. Yeah. Like I remember, you lost her for no reason. Yeah, that's that, what that's it feels really like. The worst thing. That's what it, it feels like. You lost her for no reason. Mm -hmm. You know, now now you understand that the you know there's a dawn and there's a dusk. Mm -hmm. You know, the the two the two certainties in life are birth and death. You know, so you, you you learn to grapple it more. But I was 11 years old. She was the she was the closest thing, the closest person to me. Uh, so when she passed away, I was I was really like messed up. Like my parents put me in Catholic school because I was acting out and I, I wouldn't go to class. I kind of like gave up. Mm -hmm. Listening to this music brought me back to that time and allowed me to be happy. And, and part, of, part of that is why I fell in love with it. That, you know, hearing you know, a big band, I'd close my eyes and hear the big swing band of Count Basie behind Frank Sinatra. Mm -hmm. You know, Fly Me to the Moon. When when it goes, in other words, I love you. Ba ba da ba da da da. Ba ba ba. Like that would Classic. just that would just pick that's, me up. That's the music that represents like Italian Americans the most too. It's happy. Like, it's timeless. Like you listen to Frank Sinatra. Oh yeah. Frankie Valli. Those Italian American singers. Like there's no pop artists really like that. No, and everything was about was about the beauty of life, love. Uh, uh, sometimes the pain of loss, all real human emotions. Uh, you know, now music is straight away, and that you know, uh, not that I I love listening to country music, but country music is one of the it's last the thing, is yeah. the, one of the last bastions of uh, of this type of music. But it's music that that tells the story of real human emotion mm -hmm. and things you might go through. You know, uh, a lot of the bands like uh, Coldplay and the, the, they do it too. They write, they write music about feelings instead of about things like the cars and the club and this and that. But anyway, the, those Italian-American artists represented me, represented my place in pop culture. You know, my place even with a Gap shirt. I started wearing nicer clothes and kids would make fun of me. Like I would, I would come to, I went, when I went to Catholic school, I used to go to like uh, a K and G or some like discount store, mm -hmm. and there you go. You want one too? There's one more for you right no, now. No, I'm all right. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna grab that other Manhattan special. Here we go. Here we go. It's happening. Oh yeah, that's right. You know what? I'll open this when when someone else is talking. And so I'm gonna I'm gonna cut you off for a second. Um, just two things actually. So you said how you know your music. Well, not your music. I'm sorry. Singing that kind of music, mm -hmm. the timeless, you know, Frank Sinatra, it reminds you, uh, you with your grandma at her house, you know, makes you, just gives you those happy moments. Mm -hmm. What you're doing now, singing those songs again, I can't imagine how many households that you brought joy just of That's listening, exactly. just of listening to those people another time. Ever anybody asked me what's the favorite thing, what's your favorite thing about what you do? It's two things. It's, it's that it, I get to, well, no, sorry. It is, it is one thing. It's that I get to make people as happy as this makes me. Yeah. Getting up there and singing this music and being able to kind of bring my grandma back for a little bit uh, and bring back that simpler time and sing feel-good music to people, mm -hmm. making people happy is, it makes me happy. Mm -hmm. Doing all this, getting to go on stage and getting to tell stories about my mother and jokes about you know, my losing weight or something like that. And I, I get to be real with people. That makes me so happy. So the fact that I can make people even 10% hap as happy. Happy for that moment. It's all worth it. As I am, it's all worth it. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned uh, the, the charity work before that, that I get to do. Um, we did the, um, the, oh, help me out. The, the Salvation Army. The You're Salvation talking, Army yeah. Gala. Things like that. that. Awesome, we're, we're partners with Shriners Hospital for Children. So whenever I get paid, whenever you pay a ticket for a meet and greet, mm -hmm. uh, it goes directly to them. I, I get half of that and my half, or sometimes the venues are great and they'll just give it to us in full. 
Uh, all that money goes to goes to the That's Shriners awesome, Hospital man. for Children. That's, Shriners that Hospital. so important. The Shriners are great. Back. You got to give back. You got to give thanks for, for, for this. Mm-hmm. Nothing, at least I believe in this, and you can believe in whatever you want. Nothing is an accident. Nothing is luck. I understand that you work for things, but the fact that you're able to work for those things and that you're afforded the opportunities and that you have the people around you, like my family, like, like some of my agents who've been great, um, when you have the people around you that are able to propel you in a way that you can become successful, I believe that you have to give thanks for that success in, in helping out other Others people. that can't help themselves. That gala that I did for the Salvation Army raised, I think, over a million dollars for, for kids, inner city kids, to, to take music lessons and to... And to be given an opportunity to get themselves out of their situation. So look how many people you just made happy, like that you make get happy making the music, you know. And what so what is it for me? Back to that feeling, exactly. It's a back night back for feeling. me. It's yeah. a night for it's me. Night. It's a week night. No, 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 no and, less, yeah. like you're saying, it's just one night. But there's actually people who are huge, like you know, the biggest of the biggest artists that don't do that. You know what I'm saying? They, like, they do. People that should. There, yeah, there are people that sometimes you might not see it. Yeah. Like I, I, I and, and, you know, sometimes there are a lot of super successful people that I know of that don't like telling, that are, you know, super great about it and don't like telling the left hand what the right hand is doing. You know, they just do it for the goodness of it. Yeah. Um, the reason why I like to share it is because I feel like it promotes it. it I have well, it promotes it, it, promotes it right, and that's what I'm trying it, to say. It, like. You know, you talk about uh, social media and that being a platform for media today, for any type of for any for for consumership today. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you could advertise doing a good deed and you influence somebody to do another good deed on their that's own, a that's a one person. If you could get one person. The reason I share things like that is because I want people to see that it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter, you know, what you're doing, what background you come from. You could always give. Like I said, I believe in a higher power. There's a story in the Bible, and I'll make it short because I know not everybody's crazy about it. But it's a good story, nonetheless, that there's a woman walking into a, a temple. Everybody's giving their offering. And there's people bringing gold and you know, bringing animals and everything for the, to sacrifice for the temple, things to give up for the temple. And this woman walks in and she drops two copper coins in a bucket. Mm-hmm. And, and Jesus, the guy in the book, Jesus <laughs> sees, her, sees this and walks up to the lady and thanks her and everything, praises her. And, and the apostle's like, oh, Jesus, whoa, 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 look, this guy brought, his, uh, this, this, this guy brought a, a Mercedes with his wife tied to it. You know, and, and offered it up. What's this got to do with nothing? It doesn't matter the amount you give or the amount of, of, uh, of, or the amount of charity work that you do. What matters is that you do it. So if I can get one person to do even a little bit, that matters so much. It matters to you. It matters to everybody around you. It matters to your community. Even a little bit, it matters. If I could give Shriners Hospital gets tremendous. I, when I say I partner with Shriners Hospital, I don't mean I give them millions of dollars a year. I don't even make millions of dollars a year. Whatever little I could do for them. You know, what, what is the meet and greet? Like if you sell out a meet and greet for a thousand people at this level in the game, you don't make a lot of money. You make like a thousand bucks. In the grand scheme of things, that little bit of money means more to people in need than it means to me. And like I said before, it's, it's your ability to give thanks for, for the life you're afforded, whether you think it's luck, this, that, or the other. It, it, it's, you have to. You have especially to. And, and that's, when, that's part of what, what we grew up. That's part of how we grew up. But especially when people know that's what you're doing, they respect you more in the community and you know, so on and so forth. Like People say, okay, you know, this kid was on a show. He got a huge platform, and now he's helping his community, and that yeah. goes a really long way. But I learned that from my mother, who didn't get, who didn't get on TV this week, who didn't, who didn't post on her Facebook. We have a, we have a neighbor of mine, uh, you know, we're praying for you, Pete Cucarello, who had a stroke, and, and his wife, Sylvia, is taking care of him, and their two boys, Peter and Anthony. They're, they're our neighbors a couple houses down. 
my neighborhood is taking turns making them dinner. Like my mother said, oh, yeah, tonight, awesome. tonight I'm going to make them. Again, that was in The Sopranos. And a lot of people don't, don't realize that when, when Bobby Bacala's wife died, the whole, the whole yeah. community came together. And each one, they made, made a lasagna, made, made ziti, made this, made yeah. that, and brought I mean, something that's over. We, that's what we do. That's, that's how my mother raised me. And I would be doing my mother a disservice if I didn't go out in the world and do the same thing she taught me. That's, that's how I think about it, really. And again, if it inspires somebody it. else to do the same thing, guess what? I don't think, you know, some of my neighbors would do it if my mother didn't do it. But my mother's always the first one. It just says, nah, you know what? We're going to go out there. We're going to do it for the goodness of it. If you want to do it tomorrow night, you do it tomorrow night. If not, I'll make my family TV dinners. They'll, they'll suffer for one night. You know, it's just the way, the way we are. Great community, great people, and, you know, you representing that yourself, it goes much further than anybody could possibly think. And 100%. I know you see it firsthand, so. Yeah. And, and what's the beauty of it is my fans are the greatest people on earth. I, I'm convinced. Because, number one, like I said, it's, you know, two and a half years, and they're still coming to see me. Yeah, that's awesome. By the way, Westbury, February 9th. And uh, Rahway, New Jersey, you March 1st. Also tomorrow, February 4th. Oh, yeah, tomorrow night on NBC. It's the place to be. Is a America's Got Talent to Champions. Are you a, you're performing? Or? I'm going to be on the show. Awesome. Yeah, you know, the, you know the dogs? They bounce the, uh, the balls on their nose. They jump through the hoops. Yeah, yeah. One of the poodles got sick. So they called the pizza guy back in. <laughs> That's <laughs> right. They said, send that pooch to the track. I'm here now. No, is it? Yeah, February 4th, you got that. But Again, that something I'm so grateful for is America's Got Talent. Yeah. They gave, me, they gave me my life. They gave me my career, which is why I'm so eternally grateful they called me back to be on the champions. I mean, you're a big personality for them, too. But a lot of people know you from the show, you know? The personality. Yeah, the personality. <laughs> no, I'm just, it was so I funny. Not so bad either, though. I no, forget about it. <laughs> forget about it. Sorry, Gianna. I gotta. You know? I gotta. But anyway, no. So America's Got Talent, uh, the champions. It's fifty of the greatest acts from all over the world. There's Got Talent franchises in 184 countries yeah. around the world. So a lot of the talent were from like th there was a the uh, attraction this this shadow group. They're from uh, Hungary. They won Hungary's Got Talent. Or they won, um, I don't know, they won, they, I think maybe Britain's Got Talent. They won one of the, one of the other, but they're from Hungary. They don't, the, the, the guy that speaks the most English barely speaks any English. So they sat me with this guy. It was so funny, just going back and forth. You know, because no you, you, you've, seen, you've seen from this, I'll talk to a wall. So <laughs> it's... Uh, so how do you communicate with him, though? Just talking with your hands or so Google Translate? We were supposed to, it, it, it's, uh, it's called the Golden Room. And, and if you've watched America's Got Talent to Champions so far, you'll see where some of the acts are sitting in a room watching the other acts on stage and commenting. Uh -huh. So I, I'm trying to get the guy to say, uh, awesome. And he keeps telling me that in Hungarian, awesome means sleep. And I'm, a, I'm, this is like the end of the night. I'm exhausted at this point. Right? I'm tired. I'm hungry. I I'm ready to get out of there. This guy's the same way. Right? He's losing his marbles. He keeps going, oh, awesome means sleep. He knows what he's doing. Right? So I'm, we're going back and forth. And I'm trying to get him to say that the act on, the, on stage is great. Mm -hmm. So he keeps saying awesome on camera like that. And I'm like, nobody's going to understand what you're saying. <laughs> right? Back and forth for 10 minutes. Finally, at the end of the thing, he goes, me and you should have show together. Right? And I said, yeah, we'll call it tired and hungry. <laughs> <laughs> this guy. Go. But it was, it was stuff like that. You know, America's Got Talent, they're able to showcase. Uh, uh, the greatest part about it is a variety show. So you're able not only to showcase your talent, but your personality, which is thankfully is something that I've had success with, success with over the last couple of years, is integrating more of my personality into my live well, you're show. You're a one-man show, so you got to do something to keep them entertained. Right? right. It's like we got Tommy out front selling the merch. He's, 
He's he's I'll buy anything that man sells. It, <laughs> case that's in point. There, that's, that's why, why he's there. there. <laughs> no, he's 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 a great front man. He's so a you great. Have, you have merch available on your website too. Or? Oh yeah, SalTheVoiceNY.com. I got a store on Shopify. I'm on Am. Oh, uh, my albums, my two albums yes, that I mentioned absolutely. before. Uh, Christmas presents from Sal and uh, the Voice EP. They're available anywhere music is sold. iTunes, Amazon. Stream it on Spotify. Don't stream it on Those Spotify. I don't make I any money that. off of Spotify. No Spotify. Go buy it. Go buy it on Amazon. <laughs> but uh, Those those two albums are both timeless. Every Christmas. I know this Christmas we were listening to it in our yeah. family. I'm like, yeah. let's check it out. We put it on the speaker. And it like brought back those old vibes. For two it. years they've been saying, Sal, you need a Christmas album. So finally I'm like, all right, I'm going to do a Christmas album. But then again, like I said, if you do it all on our own. Uh, I got this great producer. His name's Bill Jolly. He's a great producer and arranger. Uh, Bill Jolly's from Philadelphia. He works with Dion Warwick. He works with a lot of the um, the soul and disco acts. Okay. But I love soul and disco. I love that type of music. Jazz, so, you like jazz too. Lo- love jazz, of course. Of course. That's, that's, love love that's swing. Love standards. He came and listened to me uh, for for a, for a night. Came to a show, and he calls me the next day. He goes, "I got it. Tell me what you want on the album." And then just show up on this date. I come in. Those arrangements that you heard of those songs, uh, they were all him. Some of them were just a little tweaked. Uh, but but some of those great string arrangements and everything, that was all Bill Jolly. I, I have him to thank. And, of course, one of my agents, this guy Rob Mafia, for, for hooking it up with him. But I was able to do it on my own, again, because of the, the support that I had from other people. Uh, but that's available now. America's Got Talent is the reason for that album. So we go back to gratitude and everything like that. Uh, uh, America's Got Talent put me on the map and brought me back. Are you working on another album or right now so, you're just focusing on your shows? We're, we're working. I, I want to work on another album. I'm always constantly investing back into my business. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we got, but I'm still working the whole year round. You can come see me, uh, like I said, Westbury, NYCB Theater, Westbury, February 9th. Uh, I don't, you know, people are going to be watching this all over, so we might as well just say um, we're doing uh, Charlotte, North Carolina, February 7th. Uh, we got Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I'm oh, sorry, Greensburg, Pennsylvania, right outside of Pittsburgh. That's February 8th, February 9th at Westbury. Uh, the 23rd, oh, sorry, yeah. The 23rd, or the 16th, rather, I'm in Maryland. The 23rd, I'm in Buffalo. We're all over. SalTheVoiceNY.com. Tickets are always available at Ticketmaster.com, or you click the link on my website. Don't buy counterfeit tickets, people. Don't do it. It's a bad idea. It's a bad idea. People show up to my show. They're they're crying. They're commiserating. And the poor box office people got to turn them away. You know what happens when you turn away an angry Italian? What do they do? You get a fist through the window. (laughs) They're coming right through that window. They're pulling that little, uh, uh, that little speaker thing yeah. out and coming right through for you. Yeah, they're trying but, to take it. Uh, all good stuff coming up. I, I lost my train of thought. No, you're, you're grinding, man, and it's awesome to see. I'm glad you came out here in this rain and made time for us. We've been meaning to do this for a while. Um, I mean, ever since I saw your album was coming out, I was like, it would be great for us to talk about it. Hopefully, you know, some followers that we have – could go out there and you know perfect for the house for the holidays and you know I liked your um, first album too. Um, I, I just re re listened to it too. It was like seven songs, right? Seven I think it was, like yeah, it was like six. I got a lot of people songs. mad at me for that. You charge you twenty bucks for a six song CD? Listen, I got to make my money back. <laughs> but, <laughs> but it was great because that was like, uh, that was Ryan McNulty, songs, Ryan right? McNulty and Black Tie Brass. They're the band that I that I tour the whole Northeast with. So if you come to any of the shows in Jersey and oh, Maryland or anything like that, song. Boston, it's Black Tie Brass. It's like that old school feel. Like recently, I just saw rewatched that Frankie Valli movie. Yeah, and it's like that's how it was back in the days. You know, that live movie. band, yeah, live exactly. music. It was awesome. I I record my albums much the way that Sinatra did, where I like to be in the room with the band while the band's playing. I like to record it all. Well, at least when I when I when we record the band, I like to be there singing. Even if that's not the vocal track that we use, you got to have the, it's how the emotion comes through in the music, Mm. you know? And you need, it's not easy to do that because you need a big studio. You need a big studio. 
You need a big studio. It's not like you're just in the booth and then. Or a like you need super, a super big yeah. studio for the band too. You know? Or a super handy producer. What we did was we didn't have such a big studio for, for the Christmas album. Um, and, and so what we did was we overdubbed uh, many of the horns. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like a big band. But it's three horns. Guys switching out, switching out. Really talented musicians. Mm -hmm. Switching out their instruments over and over and over again. And overdubbing and overdubbing and building, building, building. So it, it, it's incredible how it's made, but that's the way I am. I like a live band. There's nothing like live music. That's why I love what I do. That's why I love performing with a big band behind me because there is no feeling in the world like that. That's the way music's supposed to be. Even, yeah. even rappers are performing with bands at certain shows. I hate doing things to tracks. Like I, in the beginning, I would take a show that was a half an hour to tracks because I, I wanted the payday. But now, I'm like, you know what? No. People deserve to hear live music. People, and you, you're going to appreciate it more uh, if you pay for a band rather than hire me with, with, with a, tracks. And with a band, it takes longer to set up also. The sound check takes longer. You got to set up all the instruments. Yeah, so you know it's people want to, you know they want to be there. Up. The easy thing is to show with the computer. <laughs> you know they want to be there. Show and I'm, not, I'm not positive that every DJ who plays every club wants to be there. I know you gotta love, you gotta love playing your original music for people no matter where you are, mm -hmm. uh, but there's nothing like having that live instrumentation behind yeah. you. Like I you said, it's, it's more work. These people wanna be here. You want, you're, you're doing it because you love it. You're not doing it because you're making 80,000 a night. You're doing it because you love it. I do it because I love it. Thankfully, sure. it pays the bills, but well, I it's something you love to do hundred percent. You know, you're not delivering pizzas in the cold. You're like you said, it comes across. You know what? And I know we're trying to wrap this up, but no, we could go as long as you want because right? we could edit it, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. There is there is no there is no replacement for the real thing. That's why when I go out, when I went on TV, I said I'm going to be me. I'm going to be genuine. I'm going to be the same kid that you run into, you know, on the corner during the summer, leaning, you know, putting armor all on his tires for the fifth time that day. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm going to be. The Cadillac. And the reason why the, I, we do it live with a band at every show, you know, nothing is ever piped in. Nothing is ever synthesized. Nothing is ever faked uh, because the people that I my audience, right, my blue collar people whether Italian-American or not, uh, they can smell bullshit from across the street. So if you're not genuine, if you don't put a product out there that's real, then it, it doesn't get perceived. It doesn't get received well because people can smell bullshit from across the street, the opposite corner, down the alleyway. So you got to, everything you do has got to be real. That's why I don't, other than knowing what I have to promote, I don't prepare for interviews. I um, go in, honestly, I sit this was down. Great because I had like a little outline. We had a. Yeah, we, we, we made a little outline. Like, I hope we have a good outline and we could cover everything we want to cover. And you literally said everything we wanted to say and even more. And honestly, after this, I could really tell you're a really humble kid. You're, you're younger than me and you're way beyond your years. Like, you have I right still got mentality. a lot to go, Sebi. You know, I still got a lot to go. I got a lot though. to go. You know, it's... It, it, People it, could really look up to you, like, save your money. If, save? If we, could, if we conclude anything on this podcast is save your money, be humble. Always listen to get, your mother. Always listen to your mother. <laughs> or your aunts. Or your aunts. And give back to your community. Like, don't forget where you come from. Right. And I appreciate you coming, Sal. When you, when you love something or someone, love it with your whole heart. Absolutely. That's so you, your family, your career, what, what you do in life. If you go out and you give the world an attitude that you can't, that you wouldn't want, like, like that kid Luca. If you go out and you treat people the way, uh, you don't treat people the way you don't want to be treated, you're never going to be happy. Mm -hmm. So go out, do what makes you happy. Save your money. Be, be humble and kind to everyone. Be the person. Don't be, try to impress people. Be someone that you can look in the mirror every day and love and appreciate. Mm -hmm. But 
Anyway, it just it goes to show because when we messaged you to uh, just just to come to this podcast with open arms, no questions yeah, asked. No questions asked. Listen, I'm in when and where. Bang yeah, like that. And I will actually. I gotta. I gotta. I gotta start. I, I say yes to everybody <laughs> because I, I I love that people want to sit down and talk to me. And it's so funny. I, I rarely ever get the time to do it. And so many people get insulted. We called you I'm at like, a oh my perfect God. time. I was in town. Time. I said, I'm going to Williamsburg. You know, I, I, I love that you guys are doing this. Anybody, anybody that does this, that, that gets online, uh, gets out. I say online like an old man. <laughs> gets, gets, gets on the internet. <laughs> gets themselves right. Puts themselves on the internet. Anybody who, who goes out there and represents the, the culture and the ideals in the, that I love mm-hmm. uh, and wants me to be a part of that, I am more than glad to be a part yeah, of man, it. Anything you need in the future too? Like, please send us any promotions you want to do, anything like that. Yeah, like you guys, up, I'd love to we sit love down. To I'd love to sit down and talk uh, and, and go, because you know what? We jumped around so much. That's why I'm all shungai in yeah. the head. <laughs> We're going to do the part two with Tommy. We're going to do part two with Tommy, right? Uh-huh. Well, you guys got to You guys got to learn. I think the world I think we needs... Gotta come t- by you guys yeah let's, let's go to him next time <laughs> <laughs> any excuse I be, get tommy like outside tommy would time. tommy would love to come to brooklyn as long as we hit bamantes after this oh, absolutely. Oh, as sure. long as yeah, Bamantis after this right now <laughs> oh, frost, like you said oh, I'm, frost. I'm sure you're hungry now you build a little appetite oh my own yeah, yeah. you, you ain't kidding some broccoli rob yeah definitely <laughs> broccoli rob like i said i'm on a, a diet manhattan special <laughs> Listen, Sal, it's a pleasure and honor having you on for your first ever podcast, like you said. Honor and pleasure is all mine. Guys, what's really important, I don't care if you come to my show. February 4th on NBC, the place to be, America's Got Talent, the champions. Check these guys Check out. These guys Check out, out that kid. Luca two out. times. Yeah. Sophie Fatu. Mr. Frankie Time. Michael Tadros Jr. And of course, last but not least, big time Tommy Romola. I want to. I want to thank them He's for the all man. the uh, for all the drops. That's the credits, everybody. Thank you. <laughs> Take care, man. Thank Born you. Born out, everybody. Born out.